Hello everyone, Genki here, and after a year since I did my Fue Coco only challenge, which I am planning on redoing sometime this year, it's time to see if I can beat Pokemon Violet with only Sprigatito. Sprigatito is a starter Pokemon, meaning it has a 310 base stat total. At first glance, Sprigatito is a fast physical attacker. However, in exchange for our exceptional 61 base attack and 65 base speed, our bulk is below average. Sprigatito is more defensive on the physical side, but it still won't be able to take many hits. By level up, Sprigatito gets primarily physical moves. We get some interesting type coverage with Bite, U-Turn, and Player Off, but what I want to point out is Home Claws. Sprigatito naturally learns an offensive stat boosting move. That is great news, since it doesn't learn one by TM. Note, Nasty Plot is not available until Area Zero. The moves that stick out to me in this list are Charm, Acrobatics, Trailblaze, Shadow Claw, and Giga Drain. Though I don't know how well that last one will work. Time for the rules. I can only use Sprigatito in battle. No items in battle, only Helldime's items outside of combat are allowed. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's begin. I named Sprigatito Asparagus. I forgot to look at his stats, but he's hasty nature, so less defense, more speed. Thankfully it was our higher defensive stat that was lowered, but this might affect us heavily in the long run. Asparagus starts with leafage, so our first normal battle was no problem, but now we need to grind. I got Asparagus to level 10 before the next normal battle. Quaxi was still not an issue, as was Nomona's Palmy. Her Palmy will only use Thundershock, which Asparagus resists. Using this knowledge, I had Asparagus set up a Home Claws before two shining Palmy with Leafage. With Mezagoza unlocked, our first stop is the Rock type, Claw. While holding the Miracle Seed, Claw's first phase was a 2 KO with Terra Boost Leafage. However, Asparagus is a 2 KO from Claw's Vice Grip. For phase 2, as Cloth thankfully attacked into Arvin's shelter, I had Asparagus start with the Home Claws. However, our Leafage then only left Cloth at just above half health after Shelter's Water Gun. Shelter then went for Leer, so as Cloth continued to only attack Shelter, Leafage took it to right health. This activated Cloth's Anger Shell, but Asparagus managed to survive Cloth's Rock Smash with above half health, giving us the win. Next is our first gym, which is the Bug Gym. I had Asparagus set up Home Claws, as Nimble Struggle Bug did a third. Our Bite then did only a little over half, so we took one more hit from Nimble before finishing it off. Tarantula survived by with Green Hell, but we got the flinch, so we took it out without receiving any more damage. Last is Teddy Ursa. Bite only did a quarter. We need a better move. I had a move in mind, but it required a lot of traveling. While traveling, I found a shiny Palmy. Also, Asparagus got knocked out by a wild Ponyard. But we eventually made it to our destination, where we picked up the team for Acrobatics. The way Acrobatics works is that it's 55 base power, but it doubles if the user is not holding an item. A 110 power move this early in the game can be a game changer, and so it was. With no setup, Nimble and Tarantula were both one shots. Teddy Ursa survived Acrobatics with red health, but then Asparagus survived Fury Cutter with only 3 HP remaining, giving us the chance to take out Teddy Ursa. That was nuts. On to the Grash Gym. Petalil only knows Mega Drain and Sleep Powder, so I had Asparagus go for Home Claws. Petalil and Smolik then were both one shots. However, last is Sudowoodo. It survived acrobatics but wasted its time on Trailblaze, so it was an easy 2 KO. With this, we have to head back west, where we take out all the trainers in West Province Area 1, in order to get the clear amulet later. However, for now, we're facing our second Titan, Bombardier. It has better one shot asparagus. Well, okay then. With that, I went and picked up the team for Play Rough, retrieved the clear amulet, and tried my hand at the Team Star Dark Base. Giacomo's Ponyard has Aerial Ace, which does over half of Asparagus' health. 
It also survived a crit player off at plus one attack. For the first time in Scarlet and Violet, Owen got the Eviolite. This item gives Unevolved Pokemon a 50% boost to their defense and special defense. It allowed us to take out Ponyard with two player offs, just for Giacomo Starbill to outspeed and finish off Asparagus. We'll need to come back to this one. With the Eviolite in player off, I decided to retry Bombardier. We set up a single home clause, as Bombardier went for its weaker rock throw. However, get this. Bombardier was a one-shot, with player off only at plus one. For phase two, I had Asparagus go straight for player off, and it did over half. Bombardier then attacked Arvin's Knockley, who decided to use Rock Polish, boosting its speed. However, Asparagus was still faster, so one more player off takes out Bombardier. With Giacomo out of our reach, we're off to Levin Sia, into our next Demona battle. We set up a single home class against Rock Rock before one-shot sweeping Nimona's whole team with Seed Bomb. Time for the Electric Gym. Iono leads with Watchroll, who's plucked in a third, but I decided to take the risk and set up two Home Claws. Watchroll was then a one-shot with Slash. Next is Luxio, so we're back to plus one attack thanks to Intimidate. It was still a one-shot with a Terry Blizzard Seed Bomb. However, Belly Bolt survived Seed Bomb, so its Spark left the Spare on Red Health before going down. Last is some Magius, who outsped and finished off Asparagus. To challenge Iono, I replaced Seed Bomb with Trailblaze. Trailblaze gives a speed boost with each hit. I also got Asparagus up to level 30, so we had more health. We still set up two Home Claws against Watchroll, and we still one shot Luxio. However, this time, I had Asparagus set up a third Home Claws against Belly Bolt, returning Asparagus back to plus 2. This made Belly Bolt a one-shot with the Trailblaze, making Asparagus plus two speed for his Magius. This allowed him to outspeed with Magius and take it out. With the Trailblaze strat now in my head, I went to battle Giacomo. Ponyard's Air Lace were now less scary, so we set up three Home Claws before taking out Ponyard with Trailblaze. However, at plus one speed, the Star Bill still outsped. With two Home Claws, Ponyard was a two KO, but the Starbill still outsped. In one attempt, we survived Wicked Torque, allowing us to use a third Trailblaze, but the Starbill still outsped. <sighs> Fine. Time for the Water Gym. We set up a single Hulk Claw against Veluza, as it did a lot of damage with Pluck. It survived Trailblaze and Red Health, allowing it to use a second Pluck, leaving Asparagus on 2 HP before going down. Asparagus now at Spedwalk Trio, who was a one shot, but its GUI negated our third speed boost. Last is Cravonable, who was a one shot. I still needed more time before challenging Giacomo again, so I decided to pick up the team for Shadow Claw, because next is Earthworm. Shadow Claw was the best move Asparagus could learn because it does neutral damage. We set up a home class as Earthworm used Wrath. Shadow Claw didn't do less damage than expected as Orphorm's headbutt did a lot of damage. After one more hit with Shadow Claw, I tried to boost the Trailblaze, and it did more damage, despite being weaker and resisted. However, Orphorm then landed its Iron Tail, so we lost this attempt. To beat Orphorm, I retaught Asparagus Seed Ball. It was 80 base power, and with the power of Terrestrialization, it's stronger than Shadow Claw. We set up three Home Claws, as Orphorm missed Iron Tail twice before switching to Headbutt. Seed Bomb did a third, and thanks to Orphorm never trying to use Iron Tail again, we took it out. On to Phase 2. We set up two Home Claws as Orphorm used Sandstorm and Wrath. We then forgot to Terrestrialize and attacked Orphorm with Seed Bomb, which it survived still in Green Health. Terry boosted Seed Bomb took Orphorm to Yellow Health, but then it went for Headbutt in Arvin's Told School, who got flinched. Our next Seed Bomb took Earthworm to Yellow Health, as it took itself to Red Health by hitting itself in Confusion thanks to Toad School Supersonic. Toad School's Grass Knot then left Earthworm a little sliver, so it went down to Seed Bomb. Okay, now I'm ready for Giacomo. We set up two Home Claws against Ponyard before one shining it with Seed Bomb. Yes, Seed Bomb. I decided trying to outspeed the Star Bill was no longer worth it. 
The Star Bell's Wicked Torque only took Asparagus from above half health to a third, as RC Bum at plus one took the Star Bell straight to a quarter. We then surround the Star Bell's second Wicked Torque with 10 HP to spare, giving us the chance to finally take it out. With the Dark Base being that hard, the Fire Base is going to be a nightmare, so it's off to the normal gym. For this battle, I gave Asparagus the TM for Charm. We need to keep the Eviolite to boost our defense, so no Chesterberry for this battle. Without Eviolite, Kamala Slam does a third at minus two attack. We need to get lucky and get off a couple charms against Kamala, so we can tank the hits while asleep, and then when awake set up home claws. We got some bad luck, but at plus one, Seafoam got crit and one shot Kamala. However, then the Dunsbar slid the hit with a quarter. I decided to grind a little bit to boost our attack stat before coming back to Larry. This time, Kamala led with Yawn, so we got in two charms before falling asleep. When awake, we then set up a home claws and got in a trailblaze. Kamala then went for a second Yawn, so I had Asparagus skin in a second home claws before going back to sleep, and then a third when he woke up. Kamala went down to a second trailblaze. With plus three attack, the Dunsparks was the one shot Trailblaze. So last is Draptor, who we outsped and one shot with Seed Bomb. Following the gym, we were immediately put into a Nomona battle. Lycanroc got sped, but we managed to set up a charm and two home claws before taking it out. However, next is Gumi, who has Sap Zipper. An hour and a half later, we're back in Nomona. We still set up a charm, but only one home claws against Lycanroc. We got some bad luck with flinches, but Trailblaze one shots like a rock. For Gumi, I gave Asparagus Play Rough, which took out the slug in one hit. Pummel was a one shot Trailblaze, so last is Quackleball. It was also a one shot Trailblaze. For our next target, I decided to try the Fire Base, but that's a no. With Charm and Eviolite, Torko's Flame Will only did a quarter, but at plus one, Trailblaze does a quarter. Also, a crit Shadow Claw still left Torko with red health. We then tried Iron Treads, but that is also a no. It outspeeds and it hits hard. Its Iron Head is a one shot, despite Asparagus holding the Eviolite. I decided to do some grinding for speed EVs, but that didn't help. So it's off to our next gym, the Ghost Gym. I had Asparagus Terrastalize and immediately take out Bennett. Bennett has Icy Wind. So it was the most dangerous. Terrestrializing gives Asparagus an Omni Boost, but at plus one, Hawthorne survived Sea Bomb with a quarter, allowing it to vanish for Phantom Force. So while Houndstone was not attackable, I had Asparagus take out Mimikyu's disguise. Our now buffed defense helped us tank Mimikyu's slash, but then Houndstone's Phantom Force took Asparagus to below a third. It went down to one more Sea Bomb. Mimikyu then decided to waste his turn on light screen, so last is Rhyme's ace, Toxtricity. It was a one shot, as with Mimikyu. Okay, back to Iron Treads. For some reason, Asparagus now outsped Iron Treads, but we still need to get lucky and not get hit with Iron Head. However, Iron Treads only use knockoff and rabbit spin, so after one home claws, two seat bombs take off phase one. For phase two, we still set up one home claws before attacking. Sea Bomb now did less than a quarter, but then Arvin's Gavillan's Fire Fang took Iron Treads to almost half health. Iron Treads for some reason had only been hitting Asparagus with its resistance to Tantrum. Our next Sea Bomb took Iron Treads to a quarter, however, Scovillan's Fire Fang couldn't finish it off, so Asparagus finished off Iron Treads. I'm still not confident about the Fire Base, so it's off to our next gym and our next Demona battle. This battle is usually the most difficult rival battle, so I prepared for it. I picked up the team for Giga Drain, and had Asparagus hold the clear amulet. However, as I had Asparagus set home claws, I discovered Asparagus outspeeds Lycanroc. Lycanroc also went for Sand Attack, twice, so we took it out without receiving any damage. Lycanroc is the true biggest challenge for this battle so the rest of Noah's team ended up being a one-shot sweep. Time for the Psychic Gym. We set up two home claws against Fergarath, as it spams in Headbutt. This allowed us to sweep two of his team with Seed Bomb. 
Okay, now time to face the fire base. We started with the charm, so that Torkoal's flame will barely tickled Asparagus. We then set our two home claws, which allowed Trailblaze to one shot Torkoal. Mayla's Star Will has speed boost, so I asked Asparagus to use Trailblaze again, and it did over half. The Star Will then wasted his turn on Screech, so it went down the next turn. Next is the Poison Base, and I had a strategy ready for this battle. It still took a few tries, but it wasn't hard, just RNG dependent. We started with the whole claws, but we need Skunk Tank to start with Toxic. We got rid of the poison with the Lumberry, but that is so we could safely set up a second home claws and hope Skunk Tank would go for a second Toxic. When it did, we could finally go on the offensive and one shot Skunk Tank. Muck was a one shot Trailblaze, Reverend was a one shot Shadow Claw, and so last is Atticus' Star Bill. Against the Star Bill, we go for Facade, which left the Star Bill in red health. But because Asparagus was faster, the Star Bill went for its weaker flame charge. That is why we went for Trailblaze against Muck. Because with both Asparagus and the Star Bill at plus one speed, Asparagus still outsped and finished off the Star Bill. Time for our final gym, the Ice Gym. For this battle, we had to go without an item. We started with the Home Claws, as Frostmoth thankfully missed its blizzard. We then one shot it with Acrobatics. Barrier was a one shot with Seed Bomb. Sat Titan though, survived Seed Bomb and Red Health, taking Asparagus to below half the Ice Spinner. It went down the next turn, so last is Altaria. Altaria also survived Seed Bomb, but it missed its Hurricane, allowing Asparagus to finish it off. Onto our final Titan. It was a 3KO with non terror boosted Seed Bomb. Would have probably been a 2KO if we terrestrialized. For phase 2, this time we did terrestrialize. Seed Bomb did a quarter. Greedent's takedown did a lot of damage, so we kept attacking. But then Greedent's second takedown left Dondozo on a sliver, so it still took 3 Seed Bombs to take out Dondozo. Time for Tatsugiri. We set up a home clause. A Tatsugiri went for Taunt, thankfully in the Greedent. This allowed us to use the second Home Claws, but then a single Dragon Pulse did two thirds of Asparagus' health. Greedent's takedown then got a crit, doing less than a quarter. However, get this our Seed Bomb also got a crit, completely destroying Tatsugiri. Time to finish the Team Star bases, starting with the Fairy Base. We set up two Home Claws, as Azumarill's balanced it over half of Asparagus' health. It was a one shot though, as was Wigglytuff and Dash Burn. Last is the Star Bill. It survived Seed Bomb and Green Health. Its Steel Roller then took Asparagus to Red Health. But then we got Hyrule the next turn, finishing off the Star Bill. Last is the Fighting Base. And this was our first big challenge in a while. Our best move was Acrobatics, but because Aerie leaves with Tyson Croak, we can't set up against it. It was thankfully a one shot. But next is Annihilate. Annihilate one shots to Asparagus with Close Combat. After a few levels, Close Combat was now a 2 KO, allowing us to set up a single home clause and one shot Annihilate. Passimi was a straight one shot, but then out came Lucario. It takes neutral damage from Acrobatics, making it a 2 KO. As I got Asparagus all the way to level 85, I remember I never maxed out Asparagus' IVs, so I bought 6 bottle caps and just max out everything. Back to Aerie. This time, Annihilate went for Rage Fist, so we were in green health for Lucario, who was now a one shot. Last is Aerie's Star Bill. It struck Acrobatics, but its Combat Torque, which got a crit, only took Asparagus to a third, so it went down. Time for the Elite Four. Riku was a sweep with Seed Bomb, but now we have to battle Poppy. We set up two home claws. As two heavy slams from Kaparaja left Asparagus in red health. It was a one shot, but next is Corviknight. Corviknight double resists grass, so I had Asparagus use Shadow Claw, which Corviknight survived despite being a crit. At level 94, we survived Kaparaja's heavy slams with a third. Also, while Corviknight still survived Shadow Claw, it went for Iron Defense, so it went down the next turn. Magnezone survived Shadow Claw by use Light Screen, so it went down. Bronzog was a straight one shot, so last is Tinkaton. It was a one shot with Seed Bomb. Next is Larry. 
We set up for home class against Tropius. As it set up Sunny Day, it took Asparagus to red health with three air slashers. Tropius was then one shot with Shadow Claw. Straptor's Intimidate lowered us back to plus three attack, but it was a one shot with Seed Bomb. Altarian or Corio were both one shot with Shadow Claw. So last is Amigo, who was also a one shot. Last on 84 is Hassel. We set up one home class against Norburn, as it went for Super Fang, taking Asparagus straight to half health. It was a one shot with Play Rough. Dragalge survived Play Rough and hit Asparagus with a Sludge Bomb, leaving him at only 5 HP. It went down the next turn. The rest of Hassel's team proceeded to be a one shot sweep. Finally, it's time for Gita. We set up three home claws against Espathra. As it said, reflect, it took Asparagus to below half health with two Lumina Crashes. It was then a one shot with Seed Bomb. The Luza and Avalug were also both one shots with Seed Bomb. Though King Gambit survived Seed Bomb, it took Asparagus to only 10 HP with Kaltau Cleave, but went down the next turn. Gogut was a one shot with Play Rough, so last is Glamora. It was a one shot with Seed Bomb. On to our final Nomona battle. We set up two home claws as Lycanroc missed two stone edges. It was a one-shot seed ball. Gujo was a one-shot play rough. Palmat did some damage with quick attack but was a one-shot. The non was a one-shot. Earthworm was a 2 a KO but missed its iron tail. So last is Quackerball, who was a one-shot. One story done, next is Director Clavel. And this was actually difficult. We could not set up against our Anguru. If we did, it would go for Yawn. But if we had Asparagus with a chest to bury, Orangaroo would spam Foul Play. Foul Play does more damage the higher the target's attack stat is, making it a 2 hit KO on Asparagus. The solution was to immediately take out Orangaroo with Seed Bomb. However, then Abomasnow came out. In this generation, Snow gives Abomasnow a defense boost. To beat it, I had Asparagus to battle with no held item, in order to one-shot Abomasnow with Acrobatics. This brought out Gyarados. Our first opportunity where we could set up. We first go for a charm to lower the power of Gyarados' Stone Edge. We then set up four home claws. Four was the minimum needed. I'll explain in a minute. Gyarados thankfully never got a crit during this, and went down to Seed Bomb. Poltergeist and Amoongus were also both one shots, so lost a Skeletor Edge. The reason we needed four home claws was because that was the minimum needed to one shot Skeletor Edge. Next is Penny. However, Penny is still Penny. Two stories done, last is Arvin. We started with a charm against Greedon, as it spammed Body Slam. We then set up only one home clause, because Greedon got paralysis and forced us to use our Cherry Berry. It was a one shot Seed Bomb. Skavilla and Toad Squirrel were both one shot with Acrobatics. Gorganical and Cloyster were both one shot with Seed Bomb, so last is Mabostiff. It survived Seed Bomb with for Fire Fang, taking Asparagus to a third. It also got the burn, but Mabasta went down the next turn. With this, we can now enter Area Zero and take on AI Turo. AI Turo leads with Iron Maw, a Fire Poison type, so I changed Asparagus to have a normal Terror type. Iron Moth's Sludge Wave still to half his health though, but we didn't have to EV Light equipped. Iron Moth was a one shot with Acrobatics. Next is Iron Hands. It survived our full power acrobatics at half health, allowing it to finish off Asparagus with Drain Punch. I got Asparagus up to level 100, but more importantly, I replaced acrobatics with Play Rough. With the Eevee Light equipped, Sludge Wave still did a little over a third, but now we were able to set up two home claws. This made Iron Moth a one-shot Shadow Claw. Play Rough one-shot Iron Hands. It was a crit, but I don't think that mattered. Iron Thorns was a one-shot Seed Bomb. Iron Jugglist was a one shot of Play Rough, and Iron Bundle was a one shot of Seed Bomb. So last is Iron Valiant. It was a one shot of Play Rough. We beat Pokemon Violet with only Sprigatito. That was crazy, but we did it. Thank you to everyone who watched this video, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe.